This is Twit. Super excited to have Andy on the line. I have followed waxy.org slash links forever. And I think Leo introduced me to it many, many years ago. So thanks for joining us today. You've been a long supporter. Thank you. <laughs> and thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah, it. absolutely. Thanks for being with us. And uh, I mentioned uh, before the show, I kind of stalked you on Twitter a little bit yesterday. So thanks for being so gracious and making some time uh, to no talk problem. to us for a few minutes. So, okay, Andy Bio. So uh, a- Amber mentioned waxy.org, um, also a, a great... Uh, I don't know what you call it—a curation website. Uh, you've, you've. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been writing about uh, technology and and internet culture for, I mean, God, since 2002, so about 12 years now. That's awesome. A true pioneer. But we wanted to have you on the show specifically to talk about the the saga of Upcoming.org, which you are the founder of. But Upcoming.org was. You know, it was. I remember it was popular. You know, back in 2007, it was a place for me to find out what was going on in San Francisco where I live. And tell us a little bit about how it kind of, what, what the evolution of it and how it's kind of come back into your hands. It is a crazy story. Uh, <laughs> so I started it in back in, I started developing, development in 2002 or so, launched it in 2003. Just did it on my own. It was, uh, I was scratching an itch. The idea roughly was, you know, in the pre uh the pre-Twitter, pre-Facebook era, um, we're talking like Friendster <laughs> era, uh, the, only, the only sites that were using a social network for anything were sites like, like Friendster where it would just be like testimonials or connecting with, uh, with other people. But uh, I had this problem, which is that I uh, was hearing about events after they'd happened from my friends. I was losing track of uh, events that I wanted to go to. And so I thought, you know, I could, I could use a social network to address this problem to help uh, surface interesting events that were going on uh, in the world around me and and help keep, tra- keep track of the stuff that I cared about. And and at the time, it was a fairly novel idea, and it came uh, launched it in 2003, and it grew to the point uh, I was it was entirely a side project from uh, from my day job i was working at a financial company in los angeles and uh and after my son was born i had practically no time to work on it so i got two friends of mine uh, gordon luck and Le- leonard lynn who both gone on to do awesome things uh they they came on board as uh, as co-founders after the first year and then after a year of development and kind of cranking on it it grew to the point that it got uh that we agreed to sell it to to yahoo in 2005 and we uh, we did that with uh, with the hope that well we'd be able to work on it full time for the first time, um, and that uh, they'd be able to provide the resources for it to grow and thrive, and that was true for a uh, for a time. Um, but after we left in 2007, it uh, you know it kind of fell apart. Uh, the it you know I. I I say that it sort of fell into disrepair, <laughs> like it <laughs> spam started getting on the site, and and uh, it was never it was never a great fit with Yahoo's uh, with Yahoo's demographics. It never really fit mm. fit well. It was a quirky thing. If you remember it, um, it was the community skewed pretty geeky. The stuff that was getting surfaced was uh, was off the radar from you know traditional event listings. It wasn't the kind of thing you'd find in, in your local weeklies, and and it was. Uh, unique in that every event that was on the site was added by uh, someone that used it. It was uh, it was a community driven site. They they built out the place name database. They built out every every venue, every event that was on the site was was added by by a member of the community. And as a result, it just had this unique uh, unique vibe. And if you if your interests were similar to to the other people that were on the site, it was for a time uh, a really remarkable way of of finding stuff that was going on. It also was public, um, you know, relative to something like uh, like Facebook's events. You didn't need uh, even you didn't even need an account to be able to get value of it. If you were traveling to New York and you didn't have friends in New York, or you moved to a new city, um, you could immediately tap in and sort of see interesting interesting stuff from the community. If you did have friends that were there, then then that made it even better. Um, so we surfaced those things above just popular events. So uh, so after we left, yeah, it, it kind of it kind of fell apart, and then they uh, they shut it down. Uh, they shut it down last year, and uh, I had been hearing rumblings uh, even a year before that 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 they were planning on on closing it. I tried to reach out, tried to you know kind of approach them and say, you know, if you're not going to do anything with it, can I have it back? <laughs> um, <laughs> that didn't it didn't really go anywhere, um, and so I'd sort of resigned myself to 
to the fact that you know that was that was over um even though i missed it i really missed it and wished it still exist existed i i knew that there were some others i didn't know how many but uh but i thought you know that's it until last month when out of the blue i got an email from yahoo offering to sell it back to me um the domain and uh and i jumped on it and uh mm-hmm. you know I didn't know going into this if there was any interest. I decided to to kind of gauge whether this was something that people wanted uh, and raise the money to develop it again uh, using Kickstarter. So I launched that yesterday and (laughs) it uh, it exploded. I mean, within within 90 minutes it was funded. I mean, you're at, uh, you know, at the time of us recording this, you're over $82,000. You wanted 30,000, which yeah, you. You reached in 90 minutes. It's kind of funny. There was a there was some article I I don't ex- I remember which publication might have been the next web that said oh Andy Bay is trying to bring back upcoming update. It's funded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, I think Mashable the same thing. They, they they posted it and like by the time that they'd written the article they you know they had to edit it.